stop making excuses. I found my reason. When I was 21 years old, hell, when I was when I graduated from high school, when other people wanted to go to school for uh, for engineering, being a doctor, uh, you know, being a farmer or whatnot, I didn't want to go to college. The reason I didn't want to go to college because I already spent 13 years in school. I wanted to get out there and be somebody. I wanted to do something. I wanted to be somebody. And what happened was, when I told my English teacher, hey, listen, I, I don't really want to go to college. I want to, I want to go and do voiceovers for Disney. She goes, well, you got to come up with a plan. I go, well, how do I do that? And this is way before internet. I go, how am I going to come up with a plan? She goes, well, you need to go to the library and you need to find a book that has to do with doing voiceovers and you need to get a hold of, of Universal or, or Disney and write them a letter. Because we had to write a letter to a college to try to get a scholarship. Well, in my case, I had to write a letter to get employment. So I wrote a letter, comes back two weeks later, hey Ron, we're, we're happy that you want to pursue this avenue, but this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to find yourself an agent. Mind you, I sent him a little cassette tape of all the voices I did. You know, I did my Bill Clinton. I did my Elmo. I did my Mickey Mouse. I did all of it. I was like, great. Wrote out a letter again. How do I get an agent? Two weeks later, I get a letter in the mail. And you need to get a hold of the Screen Actors Guild. There's plenty in every big city. You just need to go and audition for them. If they see that there's potential in you, then you uh, get a gig. They, they, they hire you, and they go find you uh, places to, to work. So there was one in Albuquerque. My mom, dad, and myself went to Albuquerque, New Mexico. I auditioned, gave them my cassette tape. I auditioned for a part for Young and the Restless, and I got the part. And uh, she goes, what we need you to do is we need you to go to L.A. And because that's where they're doing the filming and start working there. So we get back in the car and, and I'm excited to tell my dad, yeah, I got a part. I'm going to go to L.A. and I'm going to become an actor. I'm going to work on uh, Young and the Restless. It's a, it's for some of y'all out there, it's a, a soap opera. So my dad said, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean, no, I'm not? He goes, you don't know anybody there. You don't have a job, you don't have any money, and you need to make the truck payment. You have a brand new truck that you need to start making a truck payment on. I was so upset for the eight hour drive back to Liberal, Kansas, I didn't even speak to him. Next morning, it was a Sunday morning, opened up the newspaper, and in that newspaper it said, uh, Liberal high school students, graduates, receives um, scholarships. My mom pulls the paper, hands it to me, and it says, Ron Garver uh, received a drama scholarship. So I don't know about some of y'all in, in Texas, but when it came to um, getting scholarships, remember the, the, they would come to your school and you would just leave class so you didn't have to be in class and just talk to everybody, Army recruiters, Navy recruiters, Marine recruiters, you get out. Well, I signed up for, for Sword County Community College and I got a scholarship. So I was like, well, there, you know, it pays for my books. Let's just go. So proceeding to stand in line to get my books, I got a, uh, someone came up to me and asked me what kind of scholarship I got, and I told them, and she proceeded to tell me, hey, what if I pay for everything? Would you mind being a yell leader? Now, I was in football, a yell leader. And, and I was in football, so I was like, what does that consist of? Because I'm not cheering, I'm not rah, rah, yoo-hoo, none of that crap. Because all I need you to do is lift girls up in the air. They sit on the palm of your hand while you're holding them up. Depends on who you have become the cheerleaders. It was in my mind. So I did that. Got an associate's degree in psychology. And I got a minor in business. I hated it. I hated going to school because it was holding me back. It was holding me back on what I wanted to do, and that was to be an actor or a comedian. So what happened was, long story short, uh, my dad passed away in 1999 of June. And six months later, 
I loaded up my 1997 Ford Ranger manual, put all the stuff that I owned that my mom would allow me to take, and I moved to Orlando, Florida, where, uh, to proceed in my dream. Long story short there, yeah, I traveled all over the United States, lived in L.A., lived in Vegas, lived in New Orleans, lived in New York City, Orlando, Miami, stuff like that, Juarez, Mexico. Came home to see my mom, met a girl, got her pregnant, had a kid. Right there. My dreams are gone. Because I had to step up and be a father, right? So my whole, my whole avenue of what I wanted to do with my life came crushing down due to the fact of having unprotected sex. I had a child. So, with talking to my mentor, I was telling him one day, I said, uh, you know, this, this was my avenue, this is what I wanted to do with my life. And he goes, Ron, can you not see the big picture right now? I said, no. What are you talking about? He said, look at it. You were preparing yourself 20 years after the fact you had a dream. You were preparing yourself for right now. Your mind is more mature. Your attitude is more mature. You have a bigger purpose in your life to help others to stand up in front of people, to coach them, to train them, to mentor them. You weren't ready 20 years ago. You're ready now. So all that that I wanted to do, standing up in front of a crowd, telling jokes, making people laugh, not being nervous when people were looking at me, not being nervous when there was a camera in front of me, not being nervous when I'm sitting at a radio station, with a mic in front of my face, having thousands and thousands of people listening to what I had to say, doing play-by-play -play football, and not worrying about what people were thinking because I was doing something that I liked. When I went to this training, I was taught about a tree trunk. Okay? The tree trunk is the foundation of what you're trying to do with your life. Right now, in your guys' life, your tree trunk is working at this car dealership. You're trying to do everything in your power to make that tree trunk grow, right? You're putting water on it. You're giving it plenty of sunlight. You're giving it plenty of uh, uh, fertilizer so it can grow. You're making sure that there's nothing, no toxins, no, no termites, no nothing is interfering with your tree trunk, right? So with that tree trunk, you're selling cars. Before you can branch out, you've got to be able to be coachable. You've got to be able to learn how to be taught how to branch out. For example, when, when I talk to the managers about branching out, our branches, when it comes to the dealership, this is the dealership right here. Those are branching out. The dealership is our tree trunk, and each branch represents our departments. And with that being said, the tree trunk cannot grow if the branches are not growing, right? Remember when you used to be a kid and somebody would tell you that money don't grow on trees? When you go ask your dad for 50 bucks to go buy a brand new game, I think it was 10 bucks back then, 10 bucks for a little Nintendo game, right? And your dad would say, Son, what do I look like? Money don't grow on trees. Well, guess what? These little leaves out here, I don't have a green one. Those little things right there, they're called
called leaves. And guess what? That represents money from your branches. So, that being said, when it comes to you guys, when it comes to you and your tree trunk, what do you think it is? What's one of your tree branches? What else? That's what the money is. What do you need to grow your tree? Customers. Right? But the only way you're going to get customers is what? Contacts. That's through email, text, calls, networking. Right? What else? Closing? Training. Training? I don't have to buy today. 
Totally understand. But if you don't have anything to say, but okay, let me give you my business card and, and give you a call in the next couple of days. Nobody needs the next couple of days. People come on your lot to buy cars. The only way that they won't be able to buy cars is if the bank says they have four repos, they've been late every time, they have a bankruptcy, they don't make enough income, they haven't been at their job long enough, they haven't been at their home long enough, they just got started, they're 18 years old. There shouldn't be any reason why they shouldn't buy a car except price, payment, product, person. Remember that. If a customer is not going to buy a car, it's price, payment, product, person. Train. Train every day. If it's not listening to my podcast, if it's not watching my videos, it's getting with Shaka Dyson, it's getting on with um, Ryan Stuman, Steve Richards, Eric Gale, that's E-R-I-K, G-A-I-L. Sean B. Bradley. You know the reason people don't pick up the phones in the dealership? is because they're scared. And the reason they're scared is because they don't know what to say when they get on the phone. They don't know what to say to a customer when they have an objection. What's your best price? How'd you see it? I've seen it online. What website did you see it on? I've seen it on Cars Guru. Okay, great. By looking at it, looking online, you just took the advantage of taking our coupon price. When you open up the Sunday paper every morning, you take out the comics and you open the rest of it up, you got those little coupons in there and you try to see what kind of discounts you can get at Walmart, Target, Kohl's, JCPenney, stuff like that. Question. Yes. I, did, uh, I saw a video, uh, Ziegler, Ziegler, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, he was saying, he, he had a reply on, on when people you know, call their phone, like, hey, is this your best price? And he said that what he uses is, or he replies with, absolutely not. Uh, that is just the lowest price I'm legally able to quote on the phone. Is that, is that a good quote? Yeah. Good? And what I used to say, Joe hates it, and and uh, Andrew used it all the time when someone would say, hey, what's your best price? And I would say, your presence is your leverage. When can you come in today? Why does he hate that? <clears throat> because Joe doesn't understand the concept of it. Right then and there, you're still, you're trying to sell the car on the phone. Very hard. Because he's still looking online at other cars from other dealerships, right? But if you sell the appointment, you will have a better chance of selling the car with the customers here. You know, Mr. Customer, we price our vehicles online very aggressively because we're not a museum, we're a car dealership. We try to get rid of our vehicles because we get charged an inventory tax for every time the car stays on our lot. That being said, I don't want to miss your business over a couple hundred dollars, but if you're thinking thousands, then we may have to look at a different vehicle. That being said, I have an opening at 3.30 or 5.15, which would work for you today? Sell the appointment, not the car. When I was in the BDC, they were trying to sell the car all the time. Hey, Ron, what's the cheapest price we can give on them? No, sell the appointment. You have an 80% better chance of selling the customer the car when they're here than when they're not here. Unless they're in Dallas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, New York City, then, yeah, you're going to have to uh, change it up a little. But the majority of the time when I was selling cars at a dealership, I wasn't calling on them on the phone. I was texting them. I was emailing them. I was shooting videos, letting them know, hey, this vehicle right here, this is the one you were looking at. Look how shiny it is. I just got it washed for you. I know you're in New York City, but I just wanted to make sure that you see me clean. There's a difference between with me taking a video of it and you looking at pictures online. I wasn't being lazy. When you stop being lazy, you'll start seeing money. Right? A while ago when we were talking about when you run out of excuses, and you'll start finding your reason. I don't care if you're new or you're a veteran. Stop making excuses. 
There is no reason that you should say, I can't do this. Yes, you can. This is not for me. Yes, it is. I'm too old. No, you're not. People just don't like me. Yes, they do. If you put in the effort, you're going to find results. I swear to God, that's how it's going to happen. There was times that I always doubted myself because I had someone telling me that I was a worthless piece of shit. Just be completely honest. He would make rude comments all the time. He tried to get me, he, well, he tried to fire me or tried to get me to quit because he didn't have the, the guts to fire me. He tried to get me to quit several times. You're worthless. You can't sell anything. If we had a bad month, it was my fault. But I, but something within me, when someone was telling me that I couldn't do something, something within me was like, we'll see who lasts here longer, you or I. He tried to take credit when I was the number one salesman in the group. He had nothing to do with it. He tried to take credit when I was number one the second year, the third year. He had nothing to do with it. But did he? He put the fire in my ass to go out there and prove him wrong every time. When he told me I couldn't, I showed him I could. When he told me I won't, I showed him I would. That is sometimes what people need. Owen sits there and says, you know what, Ron is an asshole, but he means well. There's stuff that Ron says that will just throw you off your feet, but he does it for a reason. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to be your friend. I'm not going to go out and drink beers with you. I'm not going to party. I'm not going to go and, and go bowling with you. Because that's not what I'm here for. I'm not your friend. I'm not your buddy. That, that's the, the fine line that some managers have that confuses a salesperson is when you hang out with them, what happens? You get comfortable. And then when they get their butts chewed out by the manager, it's like, hey, man, I thought we were friends. No, we're not friends. Even when we clock out, no. There's times that I didn't go hang out with Joel when he would invite me to come over. And if I did go over there, it was about work. Because I knew I had, I had an ally, and that was his wife. And I'm like, you want to know what Joel was doing today? When he should have been working, he was watching the uh, Conor McGregor highlight when he was going to fight Nick Diaz. Yeah. So when you ask him, did you sell a car today, and he tells you no, and you ask why, and he just says it was slow, there's the real reason. When I'm in Tampa, Florida, and I'm at a training deal, and I go and look on my Snapchat, and you have four guys in one room looking at a Conor McGregor fight, I don't think it was Conor McGregor. I think it was somebody else fighting. And then you you sent a text back going, really? You guys must be really that slow, right? Why aren't you doing your training videos? Why aren't you making your phone calls? Why aren't you setting up for Monday or Tuesday? You yes, asked Cole. He would preach, hey, having a great day today. It's awesome. We're kicking ass. And he goes down. He's wearing sport shorts, his dress shoes, and he's hungover. If you're going to talk to talk, you're going to walk to walk. Every single day. I train. In the mornings, I train. At night, I train. It's to better you guys. It's to get you better. It's to get you out there. It's to get you motivated. Get you dedicated. We all got bills to pay. But do we have the money in our bank accounts to pay it? I've had letters. We're going to repo your car. I've had people 
popped shit on my door saying, going to be evicted. I've had it. I've ate hamburger helper. I've told you guys several times. I've slept in my car. I've slept in my trunk because I got tired of sleeping in the back seat of my car and having a police officer knocking on my window. So I got smart. I slept in my trunk. It's dark in there. And I pop open the, the deal. The seats go back. I roll out, open the back seat door, get back in the front seat, drive away. Done it all. I, to this day, still have people in my life that said, Ron, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not going to be anybody. Family members that are 14, 15 years older than me, cousins, looking at me as a little kid going, you're not going to be anything. I remember one time when, when I was a radio disc jockey and I was hanging out with uh, the con man. He was a radio host, a syndicated show, and we had a concert in Liberal. And uh, Tracy Bird, a country music singer, came down uh, to do a concert. So we all went to a, a, uh, a club after the concert, and my cousins were there, and they were, oh, hi, Ronald, how are you, blah, 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 trying to be all nice to me. I don't think they ever said two words to me when my, when my dad passed away or when we had family get-togethers. And I was like, who the hell are you? Hi, I'm Ronald's cousin, Terry. He, they don't give a fuck who you are. Excuse my language. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know these people. I'm his cousin. No, you're not. I don't owe you. I don't owe you anything. <clears throat> if you doubt me, I will prove you wrong. If you say I'll amount to nothing, I will prove you wrong. And I will not have you in my life. My aunt passed away back in August. Went to the funeral, didn't speak to nobody. Not even my mom's other two kids. And you see what I said, other two kids? I didn't say brothers. You bring negativity into my life, I don't have nothing to do with you. If you say I'm not going to amount to anything, then you're already dead to me. My mother believes in me, my grandmother believed in me. My grandmother has passed, my mom's still alive. Sometimes I got to break it down in crayon and what I, and what I do, because she doesn't understand. She'll probably watch this video, which is okay. Have you talked to your brothers? I'm, I don't have any brothers. I used to look up to these guys. But the decisions they've made in their life, I don't want part of. The decisions, the road they are going down, when you have a conversation with somebody and all that comes out of their mouth is a bunch, a, a bunch of, of puke and vomit and negativity and they're, they're bitching and complaining about something, I don't need it. I don't need it poison in my life. I don't need it coming to me and ruining what I have going on for my life right now. And you should not either. If you have doubts in yourself, stop. If your wife or your husband or your significant other, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever tells you, listen, this may not be for you. You better pick up that damn ball and you better start driving it. No one should tell you you can't do something. At all. You plant that tree when you started here. You better start branching out. Right? Every single day. The day you were born, you, God had a plan for you. When you came onto this earth, God had a plan for you. Stop fighting Him. True leaders do not create followers. They create better leaders. I used to be told, Ron, not everybody can be like you. You're right. Not everybody can be like me. They can be better. That's all I want. 